After winning the national championship with the Wisconsin Badgers, it was time for Coach Husky's next challenge. You all voted and decided on our next team, and so Coach Husky's newest task is to rebuild the Arizona State Sun Devils. To start season one, we were invited to the NIT preseason tip-off tournament and had to face number one seeded Baylor to start off. We managed to keep them at arm's length down the stretch of the second half, but the game still came down to free throws at the end as we would come up clutch and knock them down, and we would walk away with the victory over the number one seeded Bears. After beating Michigan in the semifinals, we found ourselves up against Indiana in the championship game, but would fall short to them in a 17 point loss in the championship. We opened up the season home opener with a game against Texas A&M. We had a solid lead on them with just under a minute and a half to go in the game, as our offense would continue to extend that lead for us, and we would open up our season in front of our fans to give them a victory over A&M. Baylor was back in town now, and were looking for a rematch against us, as they were making an offensive push late in the game, but our offense was not backing down either. And after some clutch free throws from our point guard, we managed to hold off Baylor and pick up our second victory against them this season. And this was perhaps our biggest non-conference matchup of season number one against the Cardinals. Even though we didn't play as well as I would have liked to down the stretch against them, our defense held strong and we walked away with a huge victory in Louisville. This would cap off the preseason where we would end up going 9-4 and four overall to start the year and we would open up Pac-10 conference play on the road against the Oregon Ducks. Oregon would manage to come from behind and tie this game up late, and we had a chance to win it here on this shot, but it was just off the mark, so we would end up going to overtime in our conference opener. Oregon would strike first in overtime, and we would keep trading the lead with Oregon as no one was able to take control of the game. Down by one, I thought we should have got a foul called here on this layup, but no whistle was blown, and Oregon would come down with the rebound and run the clock out, as that's a very tough way to drop our conference opener, but we had to bounce back, and our team would manage to do just that against the Stanford Cardinals, as we would walk away with a dominant 71-59 victory for our first Pac-10 conference win of the year. But we were right back in crunch time, this time against Washington, and with under 10 seconds to go, we would be sent to the free throw line, and Winslow would come up clutch again, knocking down both of his free throws, and we would hold on for the win against the Huskies. After that, it was time to close out the month of January with a rivalry week matchup against Arizona. This one wasn't even close and we secured a huge double digit victory against the Wildcats. And with that momentum rolling for us, we were looking to get revenge against Oregon for the loss they handed us earlier in the season. Once again, Winslow had a chance to win the game for us at the free throw line late in the game and he would do just that as we got our revenge on the Oregon Ducks. To close out the regular season, we had a game against number 10 Cal who was in first place of our conference and we were headed into this game ranked 24th in the nation. This was another close one, and I'm sure Cal fans thought they had it in the bag after this and one layup from the Golden Bears, but our deadly three-point shooter Erickson had other plans as he would drill this shot to tie the game up at 69 apiece, and he would follow that shot up with the same shot from the other side of the arc to give us a three-point lead over number 10 Cal, as they would not be able to hit a last-second shot to tie it up, and we would end the season with a top 10 upset over the Golden Bears. With that win, we would finish the season 21 and 10 with a 12 and 6 Pac-10 conference record and that would get us the fourth seed in our conference tournament. First round was against Oregon and we were able to make the season series record 2 to 1 in the favor of the Sun Devils which would get us on to the next round of the tournament. This time, it was a rematch against Cal, and they were looking for revenge for the way we ended their regular season, and they would get it no problem, as they would embarrass us with a 16-point loss in the second round of the Pac-10 tournament. We would still manage to make the NCAA tournament, however, though, as a seventh seed in the West region, and our first round matchup was against the 10th seeded Boise State Broncos. This 10th seed would not go down easy and fought all the way until the end, but we would manage to hold them off and get a seven-point victory to advance the next round of the tournament. The second round was our second Big Ten matchup of the season, and it looked like it would go the same way as the first one did, as Michigan State would end up blowing us out in the second round 89 to 66, and that 23 point loss would be how season number one ended for Coach Husky and the Sun Devils. We signed three prospects during the season, though, including four star Isidore Avent, and in off season recruiting, managed to sign another four star in shooting guard Sam Franklin. To start off season two, we had a game against Powerhouse Gonzaga, and it would be a close one as we kept trading the lead back and forth with them, but once again, after some clutch free throws late in the game, we would manage to hold off Gonzaga and walk away with the victory to start season. 
preseason number two. After that, we would book a flight down to Hawaii for the Maui Preseason Invitational Tournament. And round one was against top 25 team New Mexico, and we would manage to hold them off for a round one victory in the tournament. Round two saw us going up against the top 15 team in the nation in the Texas Longhorns, and this was another close one down to the wire, but we managed to draw foul and get to the line late in the game, and after knocking down both of those clutch free throws, we would hold off Texas and walk away with a victory that would send us to the championship round. This final matchup would be against the Buckeyes of Ohio State, and we haven't been very successful against Big Ten teams in this rebuild so far, but this game would prove to be different for us as we would finally pick up a Big Ten win and would win the Maui Preseason Invitational Tournament over Ohio State. Back to preseason action at home, and we had a huge matchup against DePaul. This dominant win was super important for Coach Husky and the Sun Devils as they had a recruit visiting who had DePaul as their second choice school. But this win would ultimately win over a four-star power forward Gary Fields for us from DePaul. And once again, we had another Big Ten matchup this season for our team. And we were looking for revenge against Michigan State who blew us out in the Sweet 16 last year. Although it would be a bit closer this time, the result would still be the same as we would get handed a loss here in East Lansing by the Spartans. That would wrap up the preseason though and we were sitting at 9-3 and three on the year and that would give us the 14th ranking in the nation. Opening up Pac-10 conference play would be a close one once again against Washington but we would hold them off in the end to open up Pac-10 play with a win. Cal seemed to have taken a step back from last year after winning the conference and we would take care of them this time by getting our revenge from the conference tournament lost last season, as it was now time for rivalry week and we were back at home in Tempe against the Wildcats. This game would come down to the foul game and free throws at the line, and once again, we would come up clutch at the line and walk away with a win over our rivals. We now found ourselves with the highest ranking yet in this rebuild at number one in the nation, and to close out the regular season, Washington State was looking to upset us at home. They would push hard and get our lead only down to 10 points with under a minute to go, but being the top team in the conference, we were able to hold them off and end the season with another victory. That win would give us a final 15-3 conference record and a 24-6 overall record for season number two. We would finish ranked sixth in the nation, unfortunately not able to hold on to that number one spot, but we would get the number one seed in our conference tournament. Round one was against Cal, and they really seemed to have a hard fall off from last season. They went from conference champs in season one to a second to last place finish here in season two. So naturally this game for us as the top team in the conference was no problem and we walked away with a big time double digit win over the Golden Bears in the first round. We would follow that game up with a second round victory that was a little too close for comfort but nonetheless we would find ourselves in the championship game against Stanford. This was a team that was on the come up in the Pac-10 this year but they still didn't quite have the developed talent to beat us as we would walk away with our first Pac-10 conference title in this rebuild here in season number two. Even with the way we finished our season though, we couldn't quite crack the top four in the nation and we would be given a two seed in the West region for the tournament. First round matchup Coppin State was absolutely no match for us and we walked away with a huge margin of victory. Round two we saw another matchup this season against New Mexico and this time around we were much more dominant than in the preseason. This game really showed how much we had progressed as a team this year and we would punch our ticket to the Sweet 16 once again with a 22 point victory and who else would we see in the sweet 16 once again other than michigan state and finally the third time would be the charm as we would get the victory here over the spartans and would find ourselves in the elite eight against top seeded kansas this game did not go how we wanted in any way shape or form though as kansas dominated us all night long in this matchup and our season would end with a 22 point loss in the elite eight to the jayhawks on the bright side though we did manage to sign our first five star to the pro program in this rebuild headed into season number three. We wanted to start season three off on the right foot and we did exactly that as we would handle Seton Hall no problem. Later in the preseason we once again found ourselves in the Maui championship game and this time it was against number 14 North Carolina. Tar Heels would send us to the line late in the game and after those free throws we would run the clock out to win the Maui Invitational for the second season in a row. And who else should our home opener be against other than Michigan State of course. We would handle business though and hand them a 
swift defeat here in Tempe, and it was then off to Raleigh for a rematch against the Tar Heels. This time, the rematch was even easier for us, as the Tar Heels didn't give us any problems, and we made it 2-0 against them on the season. For our first ever SEC matchup, we headed west from Raleigh to take on the Volunteers of Tennessee, and the Juco transfer Sam Franklin would hit a super clutch three for us with just over a minute to go, but Tennessee would put the game back within two points, and they would have a chance to win it with this last shot here, but luckily for us, it was off the mark, and we escaped Knoxville with a win. One last game to close out preseason action, and it was against Kinesis College, and this game pretty much went how you would expect it to go, and we would finish preseason play with an extremely dominant win over them. This would put us at a perfect 12-0 headed into conference play, and we would be ranked number two in the nation behind Kansas. Pac-10 play would open up for us with a game against the UCLA Bruins, and we would walk away with a victory over them with no problem at all. Washington State was once again forcing a close one against us and looking for an upset, and we would keep trading the lead back and forth with them. Eventually, Norton would come up with a super clutch layup for us, and the Cougars had a chance to win it, but once again, we escaped a possible upset by a missed last second shot at the buzzer. I said last season that Stanford was an up-and-coming team in the Pac-10, and it looked like they had finally arrived this season. They were playing super dominant and led us for almost this entire game. Stanley, however, would come up clutch with this huge turnaround jump shot for us to take the lead, and we would hold on to barely defeat number four Stanford at the buzzer. And I'm sure this isn't the last we've seen of the Cardinals this year. It was time for rivalry week again, and the Wildcats once again didn't show up to play us at all. Even though they tried to close the gap late in the game, we would still win by nine over them. And like I said, we weren't done with Stanford, and this one was down to the wire again. Simpson would hit some clutch free throws to extend our lead, and we would once again barely hold on for a close victory over Stanford. Close out the regular season, it was another matchup against the Bruins. It was actually a really close matchup between us this time. Sam Franklin would come up clutch and hit a big three for us, and after some late one and one free throws at the line, we would close out the season with an eight point victory over the Bruins. Coach Husky and the Sun Devils would finish season three with a perfect 30 0 record, and once again secured the first seed in the conference tournament. Round one against USC was no problem at all for us, as we would secure a huge 34 point victory over the Trojans. Round two against Washington was a bit of a closer matchup, but still ended in a double digit victory for the Sun Devils. And once again, it was a matchup against Stanford, this time for the conference championship. A rematch of last year's Pac-10 championship, Stanford was definitely looking for revenge, and they were fighting tooth and nail down to the wire to make that a reality for them. However, we were one of the best teams in the nation at the free throw line, so when it came down to it, we clutched up and won our second straight Pac-10 conference championship against the Cardinals. This win would finally clinch us the top seed in the NCAA tournament, and our first round opponent, Austin PA, was no match for us, as we would demolish them 107-53, to and we would easily advance to the second round of the NCAA tournament. Southern Illinois wanted to give us a little trouble this round, though. It wasn't exactly close, but the Slukies would not go away easily. We would still manage to bag a 20-point victory over them, though, in the round of 32, and our Sweet 16 matchup was against Coach K and the Duke Blue Devils. But this just wasn't the same Duke team of recent years, as we were able to bully them all night long and punched our ticket back to the Elite Eight for the second year in a row. And I have to say, Duke was a much tougher opponent than number two Arkansas, as we handled them no problem at all to get the win, and we were headed to our first Final Four matchup of the rebuild. This game was against Maryland, and I kind of wish Indiana would have won the matchup against them, because I think it would have made for a much more eventful game, as we would clinch a ticket to the national championship with this win over Maryland, and walked away with a blowout victory while doing it. So it all came down to this rematch against Kansas for us. It was a close one down to the wire, but we tried our best to pull away late, and our defense was stepping up and getting some clutch stops for us. But Kansas wouldn't quit just yet on us, but even with their late effort, they weren't enough to hold off the Sun Devils in the end, and we would finally complete the rebuild here in season number three. Coach Husky had fully rebuilt the Arizona State Sun Devils and had turned this team into what he wanted them to become. The Arizona State Sun Devils were finally... NCAA National Champions. So now that we have won two championships, why not make things a little harder on ourselves? Our next school we rebuild will be a non-Power 5 team. Let me know what school you want to see rebuilt down in the comments below. And the next NCAA rebuild will be out next Monday at 4 p.m. Central.